I get when people make grand sweeping statements, it can be a bit annoying, but genuinely, if you do not understand and appreciate how good of a wrestler Cesaro is, I think you may be crazy. It's like he's been sent from a wrestling planet to come to Earth and show us how great wrestling can be, and any single promotion on the planet would be lucky to have him. Sadly though, he has always been a little bit underutilized by WWE, and while that's nothing new, that doesn't mean it's not sad. However, given everything that happened at WrestleMania 37, we may be on the cusp of a push for Cesaro, and I personally think it's time. Why? As this is YouTube 2, we will break it up into eight easy to understand and accessible points. The first of which is that when it comes to Cesaro, he is quite ironically like a Swiss army knife. He can do anything. Need a mid-card bad guy? He can do it. Need a mid-card good guy? He can do it. Need someone to slide to the tag team division? He can do it. Realize, oh no, we've got 20 minutes to the end of SmackDown and we need someone to have a five-star match? Guess what? He can do it. So while he has never reached the heights that he has deserved, Cesaro has been a beast throughout his entirety within the WWE and also, and maybe more importantly, he has been reliable. And when you can trust someone and know that you can put whatever you want on their shoulders and they can handle it, well, that's somebody to take a look at. All we need to do now is take advantage of everything we did do at WrestleMania 37, e.g. Cesaro getting a win, and put him in a position where we can finally see if he is going to sink or if he's going to swim. Or to break that down even further, just give me Roman Reigns versus Cesaro. Number seven is a bit more obvious, and that is that the fans really wanting. Given that crowds slowly but surely are starting to open up again, wouldn't it be great if we got to the end of the year where fingers crossed we are back to normality and Cesaro is considered a top single star? But seriously, this kind of chatter has been going on ever since Cesaro was in the likes of Ring of Honor and PWG. And also, if we talk about this bluntly, who can do the things that he does at his size? He's a little bit like a wrestling anomaly. I bet he could become a luchador tomorrow and somehow he'd be the best luchador ever. You also can't find anyone within wrestling who doesn't think Cesaro's great. And I know, I get it, you're saying, but Simon, he was a United States champion and he's won the tag team title seven times and he was the first ever Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal victor. But now that he is 40 with over 20 years of experience, I really do think we can at least try to do something more with him. And the time, as John Cena would say, is now. In a number six two is something I've just mentioned. And that is, when you get to most professions, if your peers and your colleagues look at you and go, man, he's really good at what he does. I want to give him a hug. It usually means that you're really good at what you do. And like I say, everybody said this about Cesaro. Everybody, even people that have never worked with him. They just watch him from afar and go, well, I'll never be that good. Cesaro is the king. Thankfully, too, this means that now some people who are starting to get more power, like Daniel Bryan, can now go to management and say, what are you doing? Why aren't you doing more with this man? He is a wrestling alien like we already established. And we don't really know how much say Daniel Bryan does have behind the scenes of SmackDown, but that is the rumor, and it has kind of coincided with Cesaro being pushed up the card. So let's hope it is true, because again, it means in meetings, when they're making the plans, somebody will be going, don't forget about the Swiss Superman. And why do you think he beat Seth Rollins too at WrestleMania 37? It's because Seth Rollins is one of management's boys, and he went to them and said, no, I don't think I'm going to get much out of a win here, but Cesaro, it will do him the world of good. Also, everybody wants to work with him. Everybody. He is just that guy, and even if you're only a mediocre talent, you'll work with Cesaro, and all of a sudden, you will be the best. And I'm sure some people go, Simon, you are overselling this a little bit. Am I? Go and find me the proof. We shall continue to keep it topical at number five and go back to that Mania 37 match. Because let's just take a minute, think about both days, think about the matches that you did like, the matches that you didn't like so much. I'm sure that in terms of what was at the top, Seth Rollins versus Cesaro has to be in that conversation. And I wouldn't argue with you when it came to that. I thought it was excellent. And even on night one, when you start competing with the likes of Drew McIntyre or Bobby Lashley or Bianca Belair and Sasha Banks, you can't then just ignore Rollins versus Cesaro. And of course, a huge reason it was so good was because of Cesaro. I mean, at least 50% of it. And you could say that they had an even harder time because their expectation bar was massive and they were able to do all of this within 12 minutes. I mean, sometimes I've been to the toilet for longer than 12 minutes and I didn't achieve anything. So you absolutely have to see it a little bit like Cesaro's coming out party, but that means nothing if we don't jump on it. 
You've got to strike when the iron is hot. That was an iron. That was a match. The point is, do some flipping striking and do it on SmackDown. Let's keep this flow going too and talk about those 12 minutes. 12 minutes is not a lot of time to do anything within the world of professional wrestling, but Cesaro is a master of maximizing his minutes. And that sounds like something I could put on a folder and sell as a Ponzi scheme. And if you listen to the Grilling JR podcast too, Jim Ross talks about this all the time. Don't worry about how many minutes you think you need. Worry about the minutes that you've been given and just make sure it presents you in the best light possible. I don't need to say the other bit because you know who I'm referring to. And this may have actually hampered Cesaro a little bit because it means when WWE needs to mop up somebody else's mess, they go to Cesaro because, again, he will go in there and make it work. But there's been some positive stories too. His tag team with Tyson Kidd, his tag team with Sheamus, The Bar. I bet that World Wrestling Entertainment didn't have high hopes for them. But now all of us look back and go... They were some really good times. Next, we will move on to mic skills, which is always an area that naysayers will bring up. And sure, it's not Cesaro's strong point, but I do think we need to bring in context. Because if you go and find Cesaro on a show like Talking Smack, where he's not being scripted, he's got passion, he's fiery, he has focus. And sure, he's not the flipping rock, but not everybody can be the flipping rock. Also, you can counter that easily. Cesaro is better in the ring than the great one. So he has that going for him. And I know you need little bits of everything, but if we're going to play this game, that's how we're going to play it. I mean, look at Brock Lesnar. He doesn't say shib. My point is this. If you want to get the best out of Cesaro, put him in a more natural environment and don't stick a piece of paper under his nose and say, oh, can you read this please, Mr. Cesaro? Which he will do because he's a team player, but clearly that's not his stick. So you basically have to let Cesaro be Claudio Castagnoli instead of whoever the hell you think he is. This isn't the first time we've been here either. I remember people going, oh, Bret Hart can't talk, Daniel Bryan can't talk, AJ Styles can't talk. And yet now as we stand here in 2021, Nobody really makes that point anymore because they found their voice. Stands to reason that history could repeat itself. In at number two, people love that swing. Don't overlook this either because you've got to make sure that you do have moves in your arsenal that even when you tease, fans go crazy. And Cesaro has that when he grabs an opponent by the legs and just like spins them in circles. And you don't want to over on it to the point that every single match that Cesaro has is, oh, my opponent doesn't want to be swung because it's no fun. But it is a tool and it's ripped and ready to use. When crowds are back properly, they will love every single second of this. And it is very impressive. Have you ever tried to do it? It's really hard. Finally, in at number one, and let's keep it simple. Why the hell not Cesaro? Exactly. And you may be able to come up with some reasons, but why should that stop us from trying? Cesaro has been around for years, so is now like comfortable within the system. He has the skills to be having main event matches. So why the hell don't we just give it a go? You also don't need to worry about how he's going to handle himself because he has been in WWE for ages. And I haven't heard one story of someone going, oh, Cesaro put his foot in it. And in World Wrestling Entertainment especially, you need to be able to walk that tightrope. I don't like doing this either, but it does make a point. But if you bring in other guys that were put in that position, like an Alberto Del Rio, a Ryback, or a Jinder Mahal, and look, fair play to those guys, they deserve that opportunity. But Cesaro, I would argue, has qualities that are far superior to theirs. So once again, why not Cesaro? I mean, in terms of pure wrestling, he is the best of these four by some distance. So in summary, he has earned his chance and hopefully recent programming means we're finally going to pull the trigger. And if you don't do it now, you really are going to miss the boat because you could only tease the fans so much. I mean, go back to WrestleMania 37 night two. Remember when Bailey was out and everyone was going, Becky, Becky, because they wanted Becky Lynch. And then they got the Bella twins. Nobody hates Nikki and Brie but it's just not who they wanted to see. If you keep to and fro in when it comes to Cesaro, eventually we will all fro, and if you do decide to do it, we no longer will care. That's not true at all. I could be 100 years old, and if Cesaro is wrestling, I will still want him to be pushed. Now, don't forget to leave a comment below and let us know what you think about Cesaro. Are you in the camp for him being pushed? Or I know they're out there. Are you in the camp that he shouldn't be pushed? I want to hear from you all. Then please do like the video, share the video, and hit that subscribe button. We've also got a website known as whatculture.com. Come and read some articles. You can come say hi on social media, and you're already on YouTube. Please click some other videos. My name is Simon What Culture. Thank you very much for joining me as always. And regardless what happens with Cesaro, just in case he sees this video, what a terrific wrestler he is. Like, I'm a wrestler. Well, I used to be, and then the world stopped. But I'm about to be again soon, and I will never be as good as him. And I'm all right with that 
because he's so brilliant, sometimes you just got to accept what life throws at you. Cesaro, you the man.